first presenter is Rosemary Ward, um, who was PI on an IG grant at the university, or I'm sorry, at Miami University before she moved to the University of Cincinnati, where she is Dean of the Graduate College. Um, I love her self-description. Um, she is a health psychologist and a quant jock. And um, as part of her day job, she actively seeks to break graduate education while making bad jokes. And I hope we hear some of those in the next 10 minutes. Um, I just wanna note that uh, the title of Rosemary's project is Interdisciplinary STEM Graduate Learning Community. So already we have uh, one area of thematic overlap with one of the presenters or one of the participants in this group. One of the reasons why we invited Rosemary to present is that she just wrapped up her project. And so she has um, the perspective of somebody who has uh, kind of come full circle and is, is um, looking at, at the entire cycle of her project, but also to the sustainability piece. So um, we're really glad to have you present today. Thank you, Julia, and thank you for the opportunity. And welcome, everyone. Um, I can definitely assure if I do tell a joke, it will be bad. So I appreciate that amazing opportunity to share with people I don't even know bad jokes. My mother would be so proud. Uh, but just to, again, really, it's a graduate student learning community that we use. And I had three amazing co-PIs work with me, Amanda Diekman, who is at Indiana University, and Ellen Uzerski and Stacey lowry Bretz, who are both still at Miami, so next slide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a real brief overview of the project. I'm gonna give you a, a timeline of when we made decisions because like Julia said, um, we are done. And then how we develop project partnerships and then some lessons learned, so next slide. So in terms of an overview of the project, that's a quick slide, so next one. Um, there were four of us. And so I don't know how you put together your grant. And it's nice to be in a space where people are all at the same position as you have the grant. But when I saw this announcement, the first announcement back in 2017, I was like, this sounds like an amazing opportunity. Let me find some fabulous women to come together and think of ideas. And when we came up with our project, it was literally sitting around drinking tea and saying, what can we break in graduate education? And that's what we did is things that we could build to kind of remove some of that hidden curriculum and de develop some supports. So two of us are psychologists by training, that's myself and Amanda Diekman, and Ellen Uzerski and Stacey lowry Bretz are both in chemistry and biochemistry, specifically chemistry education. But I'm gonna come back to that because that leads to the partnership part. So next slide. With regards to our grant, we focused on developing a participant's professional identity. One of the biggest things that we see in the literature about supporting graduate students and helping them retain, be, in terms of retention and thriving and success is feeling like they belong in their discipline. We also tried to build a sense of community, which became key because we had to pivot due to the pandemic. And then a key thing, again, I don't know if you remember what was going on in 2016, but there was a lot of questions about our ability to communicate the importance of our science. And so we really wanted to make sure that whatever they were studying, and it was a lot of different things, could they communicate that to non-specialists? So next slide. Our grant was a learning community. So it was a year long process. We had an application process that the students had, and then they came together and they met with us in a cohort for an entire year. And they had sessions every three weeks with their cohort in which we shared food and then the pandemic came and we wrote, went through different things. So I'm, if you are interested in your, our curriculum, I can share that. We also have an inside higher ed article about this. And we also have one in um, chemistry postdoc as well. But the idea is we started them off just thinking about their own narrative. What is their story? Then we talked about the various different roles that a graduate student plays on campus. Then we did an individual development plan where we really partnered with their mentors. We talked about finding jobs. We talked about different mentoring structures. And then we spent a lot of time with communicating to non-specialists in which they did data dumps and three minute thesis like talks. And at the end, we really put it together and said, how do you vision and build from this, building from your community experience? So next slide. With regards to our timeline, 
what was really key for us to develop partnerships was having a year long prep. So I don't know if you had a prep time. I don't know how much time you gave for a prep, but it actually became really crucial for us to develop those partnerships and have that flexibility of not just developing curriculum and onboarding the students, et cetera, but having that time where we can come together as a team as well. So in 2019, we onboarded our first cohort. And then March 2020 happened where we had to pivot from going face to face with our curriculum to online. In fall of 2020, we welcomed our second cohort of students and really integrated across the two cohorts. And then at the end of 2021, we had both cohorts come together for a research um, like talk. So next slide. So the key of what we're talking about today and trying to keep myself to the 10 minutes here is we had to develop partners. Again, our two disciplines were psychology and chemistry. And each discipline had a very different idea about how graduate students can operate and what do they do in their quote unquote free time. We called it a third space. And it was how do we get the mentors involved and could they have multiple mentors? So during the application phase, we communicated with both departments. We were very open door about getting the mentors involved and letting them know that their students were applying. So part of the application process was the mentor signing off knowing that this student was going to meet with people and have homework and assignments. And so have this kind of enriched experience for the entire year. We also developed partners by having our homework. So they had pre-work before each session and they had homework for each session in which they partnered with other people on campus. So that was their opportunity to reach out to new mentors. That was their opportunity to talk to their current mentor and really do some relationship building. And again, we did several exercises on how to build multiple mentors because your mentor is not gonna do everything for you. And you should have people that you can go vent to and you should have people that look at your writing. There's a variety of different roles and really building on that National Center for Faculty Development and Diversity's idea of the mentor map. On campus, we develop partnerships, of course, with the graduate school, our Center for Teaching Excellence, and across the two departments. But more importantly, we really develop partnerships with students. So when we did our first application cycle, we had 12 students that we accepted into our cohort, but that meant we had 54 other students that applied to be in our cohort. And so we did regularly try to engage with them and survey them so that we could, again, kind of build this broader mentoring for the students that were going through the process and who might be into our next cohort. Next slide, please. So in terms of lessons learned, we learned a lot in the recruitment process about how some faculty feel like their students need to be at the bench and they didn't have time for this and how to have the student learn how to communicate within that partnership. We use multiple different methods of recruitment to again build those partnerships, having those one on one conversations, sending emails, and sharing back to the departments some of the things we learned. So they were partners in learning through our process. Because the vast majority of our students within our cohorts were underrepresented minorities or international students. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't just taking them out, adding to their load, and then giving them a structure in which they couldn't communicate back. And there's and a really great recent article that just came out a couple of weeks ago that said, most of our students in doctoral education, not only do not feel like they have a community within their department, they're having a hard time communicating it out. So we made sure in the recruitment process that we built some of those pathways and structures in terms of partnerships. When we were in our implementation phase, we, def we would have meetings and we would be in the class sessions with our cohort. And we had ways for people to signal when we were using kind of insider speak. And so as a psychologist, I might choose certain words. I might call myself a quant jock, which is really just trying to be funny or a numbers nerd. I like that one too. But there are things that we don't even realize sometime in our discipline we're using. And so we had signals, hand signals. So it didn't make anybody feel called out but the person knew to pause and say, oh, maybe I need to de define that or go back and give a better example. So we developed a shared language so that we were all partners within it together. We also spent a lot of time helping people communicate out the value of what they were going through. Again, this wasn't for course credit. This wasn't part of their degree program. It really was them being part of a research study. So how do we say this identity development is key? And so we helped them build that sense of community and build the partnerships by being able to communicate that. 
And that prep year was incredible for us to, again, build some of the structures so when the students went through, it was easier. In terms of sustainability, so now, as I mentioned, two of the PIs are at different institutions. So we immediately started putting together structures so that we could build this out and use different strengths from different universities as we implement it further. And so we're building partners, provosts, Center for Teaching Excellence, different faculty and different departments so we can translate the same kind of in-depth graduate student learning community across. And we've involved students along the way, including our second cohort, had members from our first cohort as mentors. So next slide. And I am wrapping up. This is my second to last slide and I've got a minute left. But in summary, what we did is we really kind of built a sense of community, partnering with the students, their mentors and the broader university community to, so they had those support networks. We taught them how to communicate to non-specialists, whether we were doing it face-to-face -face or online. And you can see we were invested in them all the way through as they graduated. They invited us to their parties and we really became part of a family. And I, yes, I have a mini hat on the top of my head because somebody was standing behind me if you see that picture. Um, so as my last slide, um, just thank you for the opportunity to talk about our amazing project. We really had a great time with these students and I feel very much invested in their process and their sense of community. So thank you.